Welcome to the lesson on combustion. At the end of the lesson, we will be able to define combustion, differentiate between combustible and non-combustible substances, describe the various types of combustion, explain the different methods to control fire. What is he doing, Dad? He is simply trying to get some heat, son. He is burning small pieces of wood to get some heat in the presence of oxygen. A chemical process in which a substance reacts with oxygen to give off heat is called combustion. The substance that undergoes combustion is said to be combustible. It is also called a fuel. Dad, I studied in my school that food is a fuel for our body. Is it right? Right, Anme. Food is broken down by reaction with oxygen and heat is produced in our body. And heat is produced in our body. This fuel may be solid, liquid or gas. Are all materials combustible? No, Anme. Some materials like iron nails and stone pieces do not burn and hence they cannot produce heat. They are known as non-combustible materials. Dad, can combustion take place in all the conditions? No, certain conditions are required for combustion to take place. To understand this, let us do an activity. To do this activity, we will take a candle, a matchbox, a glass chimney, a glass cover and three wooden blocks. We will first light a candle and put a glass chimney over a lighted candle. Chimney should rest on the wooden block such that air can enter the chimney easily. What do you observe? I can see that the candle is burning very nicely. Now. Remove the blocks and place the chimney over the table. Put the glass plate over the chimney. What do you observe? This time, candle flickered, gave smoke and stopped burning. What did you understand from this activity? I understood that air is necessary for combustion, Dad. Right, Anmay. That is why we cover a person with a blanket if he is on fire. Blanket stops passage of oxygen and thus the fire is stopped. Anme, you must have seen that it is easy to fire a matchstick. Yes, Dad. And with burning matchstick, it is easy to burn a piece of paper. Yes, that's right. But you see, Wood doesn't catch fire easily with a matchstick. We use paper or kerosene oil to start fire on wood. Yes, Dad. I have observed this. But why does this happen? Actually, Anme, different substances catch fire at different temperatures. The temperature at which a substance catches fire is called its ignition temperature. But Dad, how does matchstick start burning on rubbing it on the side of the matchbox? The head of safety match contains antimony trisulfide and potassium chlorate and rubbing surface of matchbox has powdered glass and red phosphorus. When the matchstick is rubbed against rubbing surface, Red phosphorus in the rubbing surface reacts with potassium chlorate in the matchstick head to produce heat and to ignite antimony trisulfide and this starts the combustion. Oh, now I understood. I will tell my friends about it. Anme, you have seen your mom cooking food on a gas burner. Can you think how the food is cooked? 
I'm not sure, Dad. The food is cooked due to conduction of heat from the gas burner to the utensil. Due to conduction, the heat gets transferred to the utensil and thus the food lying in the utensil is cooked. Let us do an activity to understand this. Make two paper cups and pour 50 milliliters of water in one of the cups. Heat both the cups separately with a candle. What do you observe now? The empty paper cup catches fire, but the water in other paper cup has become hot. The water is boiling in the paper cup because of the transfer of heat from the paper to the water. This transfer of heat happens due to conduction. But dad, why does the cup with water does not burn unlike the empty paper cup? This is because in presence of water, the ignition temperature of paper is not reached. Hence, it does not burn. But there are substances like LPG, petrol, kerosene and alcohol which have very low ignition temperature and can easily catch fire with a flame. These are called inflammable substances. There are three essential requirements for producing a fire. Fuel, air and heat. This is called a fire triangle. To extinguish fire, we need to cut off one of the three things. How can we do that, Dad? Water is the most common material used to extinguish fire if the fire is wood fire, paper fire or fabric fire. Water cools the combustible material so that the temperature is brought below the ignition temperature. Anme, you should understand that if electrical equipment is on fire, water may conduct electricity and harm those trying to control the fire. Water is also not suitable for fires involving oil and petrol. Then what shall we do, Dad? For fires involving electrical equipment and inflammable materials like petrol, carbon dioxide is the best extinguisher. Carbon dioxide, being heavier than oxygen, covers the fire like a blanket. Thus, oxygen is cut off and fire is controlled. And how do we get carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide can be stored at high pressure as a liquid in cylinders. When released from the cylinders, it expands in volume and extinguishes fire. What if the fire is too big to extinguish by ourselves? You should call the firefighting station in your locality. Usually, their telephone number is 101. Dad, are combustions of different types? Yes, they are of different types. Anme, the burner in a kitchen uses cooking gas. The cooking gas is mainly butane. The gas burns rapidly and produces heat and light. Such combustion is called rapid combustion. Burning a matchstick is another example of rapid combustion. Phosphorus also burns in air at room temperature. The type of combustion in which material suddenly bursts into flames without the application of any apparent cause is called spontaneous combustion. Spontaneous combustion of coal dust has resulted in many disastrous fires in coal mines. When a cracker is ignited, a sudden reaction takes place with the evolution of heat, light and sound. A large amount of gas is formed in this process. Such a reaction is called explosion.